y'all, I'm Tammy, and my husband's name is Chris, and he does the recording, and this is Collard Valley Cooks, where we cook like our mamas did. Today, we are making my homemade from scratch carrot cake and cream cheese icing, and it is in our second cookbook, and we're going to get started, and I'm going to show you how to make the best carrot cake ever. All right, y'all, I've done this many ways over the years, and a lot of y'all probably think, why is she using that hand grater? Because this is the way I prefer it. Uh, the food processor to me is just a lot of trouble, and I just like to buy the real big carrots and use a um, potato peeler and get the outside skin off, and then I grate them, and it doesn't take long at all. All right, we're gonna take a little bit of our flour and toss our raisins in it. It's supposed to help them stay up in the cake a little better and keep them from sinking. And sometimes I think it works and sometimes it probably don't, I don't know. All right, there's our raisins. Okay, the biggest difference in a carrot cake and most cakes, well, for one, it's got a lot of carrots in it. For another, you use oil instead of butter or shortening. And um, so you typically take your shortening and mix it up with your sugar first or your butter. And because we're using oil, we're going to just mix up our sugar and eggs. Two and a half cups of sugar. There's one, two, and one half. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys that have these scoopers. If you have bought the scoops like I've got, you need to use the same product to measure your flour and your sugar with. Don't change them out and use a different brand or a different measuring cup, um, and that way they'll be what they're supposed to be. So we're gonna turn this on and add four eggs. Our vanilla. Next, we're gonna put in a cup of cooking oil and I'm using corn oil. And then we're gonna put in our spices. And when you make a cake, and you use shortening or butter, you're using the same amount of grease or oil or whatever you want to call it. This is one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. That was one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon, and I like ground ginger in my carrot cake, so I put in a half teaspoon of ground ginger. Okay, we're putting in our fruit last. So we're gonna go ahead and incorporate the flour in here. And then once the flour's in here, we'll start adding our carrots, our pecans, and our raisins. So right now we're gonna add two and a quarter cups of self-rising flour. And I'm gonna start with two cups, one on each side. And I'm gonna put my little shield on here because it's gonna be cloudy. All right, that's mixed about a minute. And now we're gonna add our carrots. Our oven is preheated to 350 degrees. You got three cups of shredded carrots. We're using an eight ounce container of crushed pineapple. Juice it all. And a cup of chopped pecans. And I think I might have a little to grow on on there, in there. And that's it, that's all there is to it, except our raisins. Now I mixed up half golden and half regular raisins. And let me see. Um, we're really only supposed to use a half a cup, 
And if you want to use more, you can. I think I'm going to because I mixed them up. All right, we're going to fold this together. And get it in the pans to bake. A cake's batter normally doesn't look this wet, but it's because the butter and the shortening of room temperature, and now we're using a liquid form, so it's gonna make your batter look a little bit more wet, and that's fine. And we're gonna get this batter in these two round cake pans. Now these are deep cake pans, and if you don't have deep ones, you're gonna need three pans, okay? Now these are eight inch, so you probably could use a nine inch and it'd be fine. And remember, a carrot cake is not gonna rise quite as high, like a regular cake almost rises double. A carrot cake is gonna rise about a third, or even maybe a quarter. So these are gonna bake at 325 degrees until they're set and the sides start coming out from the edges a little bit and toothpick comes out clean. It's gonna take them about an hour. So make sure that you get them done, okay? And especially if you're making a sheet cake, it's gonna take it longer. So just be patient and don't take it out too soon, all right? All right, our cake's done. It took it an hour and 10 minutes. And it smelled up the house and smells so good. It looks very delicious. This one is pulling away from the sides. That other one, not so much yet. Yeah, it's pulling away some. So they're done and ready. Now I'm gonna let these sit out at room temperature for about 10 minutes and then we'll flip them out on some parchment paper. Oh, I can't wait to eat it. What? Well, let me tell y'all, I am going to let these cool all the way down, wrap them, put them in my freezer tonight so that I can split the layers when I ice the cake. Okay, y'all, this carrot cake is in my second cookbook. And the carrot cake, which is called my favorite carrot cake, and the icing, cream cheese icing. Now, you can toast your pecans, but I recommend, thanks to you guys giving me a tip, if you toast your pecans, toast them whole. Okay, then chop them. And that way you don't have to worry about scorching tinier pieces. So we're gonna start with a stick of butter. And I'm using my whisk uh, attachment instead of the paddle since I'm making icing. And that'll whip a little air into the icing and make it a little fluffier than if I used a paddle. So now we're gonna put in eight ounces of room temperature cream cheese. And we're gonna whip this until it's light in color and fluffy. Okay, you can see how light in color this is once it gets mixed in there. Good with that butter. We're gonna add a little bit of uh, vanilla flavoring, about a teaspoon. And we're also going to add a little evaporated milk. Evaporated milk is equivalent to cream. So if you don't have any evaporated milk, you can always use cream. So I'm gonna use a tablespoon. And then we're gonna add four and a half cups of powdered sugar to this. I'm gonna put my shield on. We're gonna add it one half cup at a time. So it's gonna take a few minutes. should make a nice fluffy spreadable cream cheese icing and if you want to you can toast the pecans chop them and then put them in here as well but we have some fresh pecans and they have a really good flavor so we're not toasting ours today 
But now a lot of the pecans you buy in the store that are dark in color are kind of oily tasting and they actually taste better if you toast them. All right, we're gonna slice these in half. So I'm just gonna use my bread knife and follow along, turning it, watching where I'm cutting right in half of the cake. The best way to do it is just to watch it as you slice it instead of trying to slice it all the way um, through with your first try. Alright, so there we have that one. It's a pretty layer. So I'm going to slice this other one and we're going to get to uh, decorating this up. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of icing on my tray. I was going to show you guys these boards I got. I got a lot of them, and, and I think it was $14 on Amazon, and the link is on the website, but you get a board that's good for a six-inch cake to decorate it, and um, this will be an eight or a nine, and then this would be good for 10-inch. So, of course, you could, the bigger they are, it doesn't matter. You could do a smaller cake on them. So we're gonna get our first layer on here. I'm not gonna put a whole lot of icing in between the layers because um, it's gonna be rich. Okay, here's our second layer. Which is just half of the first layer. And you can tell that most raisins did mostly sink to the bottom, even if we put the flour on them. And y'all might have some tips you want to share that works better than what I did. But you know what? It's all going to be good. This one, and try to center it. And um, I've told y'all before, some of you, if you haven't seen my videos, my mother was a cake decorator. So I usually give a few little tips. And today I'm just gonna tell you that you always put your icing on first. So um, you're gonna start with a good bit of icing. You're not never gonna just take a little bit of icing out and ice the cake like that. Um, you're always going to start with a lot of icing. You're going to put your pointer finger on top of whatever spatula you're using so that it can help guide and press into the icing like a point. This on there? It's going to be a pretty tall cake. Pretty tall. All right, and now you get to use all of your icing that's left. Now, I didn't make a huge batch of icing, just enough to ice this cake is all it is. And that's why I used it sparingly in between the layers, because you want enough on the outside that it's going to be pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape it all out of here and put it on the top. And we'll know what we got to work with. We got to make that work, y'all. I think we can do it. So you're just gonna take your finger, like I told you, and you always wanna kinda angle your spatula and never have it straight like this, unless you're just trying to smooth the cake. And we're just gonna go around it and try to push some down the side. Now we're just gonna make the top a little pretty. We're gonna put a few pecans on the top for the top. And then on the side, uh, because I don't have a lot of icing, it's gonna be kind of hard to swirl it. I mean, we might can. We'll try. Let me hide that anywhere I've got a showing. We'll try to hide it. So just patch it up a little. 
All right, we're just gonna put a couple of carrots on here to make it fun since it's about time for Easter. I'm just using a writing tip. Not even a tip, really. I just cut the end of my bag off. Make these bigger. Okay, and we got a little stem. Carrots really don't have leaves. Well, they have them, but it's more like a real sporadic parsley type leaf. So we're just going to put a little stem on the top of them. Now, I've got icing already made, so it's easy for me to mix, mix up a little bit of orange and green. Um, you can get it at the store already made. Buttercream that I got from Sam's Club, okay? If you put a few on the side, um, you can... Cover up your mess ups if you have any. But I'm not gonna put them on the side because I think it's pretty. There you have it. Carrot cake, homemade from scratch with our white lily flour and a cream cheese icing. And I do put ginger in mine, a lot of people do not. They use a stronger spice with the cinnamon, but I like a lighter flavor for my carrot cake. And I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. Now we're gonna slice into it and I'll show you how pretty it looks on a plate. Right through the carrots. And it's got fruit in it, so I'm using a bread knife. It's a raisin. And it's usually hard to get the first piece out of it, but we'll see how we do. There it is. Looks delicious to me. Now that is a moist carrot cake. Mm hmm It's absolutely, positively, my favorite carrot cake. And that's what my recipe says, my favorite carrot cake. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day. And we thank you so much for watching Collard Valley Cooks, where we cook like our mamas did. I hope y'all have a happy Easter and make a carrot cake for your bunny rabbit that comes by. Springtime, it's over now. Tammy, she just showed you how to cook it up like mama used to do. So go on.